All right, today we're doing a verb and a bunch of phrasal verbs that go along with the verb break. I'm excited about this lesson. It seems like an easy one, but there's a lot of interesting little nuances, little things to talk about here. So if I have this glass, right, and I break it, you know, I drop it on the, on the floor. I don't want to do that. I don't want to break the glass. But if I did drop it and it smashes, I broke the glass. So if I break something, the past tense is broke. So today, I, you know, I'm going to break this glass. Yes, or I just broke the glass, right? So in the past, it's broke. Okay, so you probably already knew that stuff. Not a big deal. Probably knew this one too. Break up. Okay, uh, the most common way of using break up is you're in a relationship, a romantic relationship. So you got a girlfriend. If you're a girl, you got a boyfriend, right? And you guys break up. And uh, you got in a fight, you're not going out anymore. So you're not married yet. A marriage, you can break up a marriage, but they call that divorce. So it's a little bit different. Um, so if you break up, you know, you were going out with the person, you were in a steady relationship, not just that was like one of the many girls you had. It was, you guys were in a committed relationship, it's not going well. You decide, you know what, no more boyfriend, girlfriend stuff. We broke up, right? So you break up, that's what it means. So end the relationship. Break down. Not the opposite of breaking up. It's interesting. Not the opposite. Um, so you can have a nervous breakdown, which is a psychological problem that happens rarely. So say someone's, they're not nervous, but, well, maybe they are. They are you know, they got to go to a psychiatrist all the time. They're in the, you know, the mental doctors and they have so much stress in their lives and they can't take it anymore. So maybe like some mother is just going through a time in her life. She's got four kids, her husband's working all the time. They don't have any money. And, you know, she's really stressed out with the kids. One kid's sick, maybe. And she just can't handle the stress. And, you know, she faints. You know, like she doesn't die, but she's like falls down or like kind of goes crazy for a little while. They put her in the hospital and they say, you know, what happened? She had a nervous breakdown or she had a breakdown. She broke down like mentally, emotionally, just too much stress. Or a professional athlete, a singer, a performer, you know, they can have a nervous breakdown because they, there's so, there's so much stress. And if you give in to the stress, you can have a nervous breakdown, wake up in the hospital and be like, wow, that was you know, way too much stress, had a nervous breakdown. It doesn't happen to most people, but if it happens, that's what it is, a break, nervous breakdown. Um, you know, and you can also break down in the sense that you gave in. So let's say somebody's begging you to do something, right? Your friend is saying, hey, do you want to go to the bar tonight with me? You know, let's go meet some girls at the bar. And you don't want to. You're kind of tired, not really in the mood. Whatever. You just don't feel like going. And your friend calls you again. Come on, man. Let's go. And you say, nah, I really don't want to go. And then he calls you again. Maybe sends you a text, an email. Finally, you say, you know what? Fine, I'll go. You broke down. You gave in to the friend's pressure. So there's a lot of pressure from something. You broke down. Or maybe I really want to eat chocolate. And I say, you know what? I'm not going to eat chocolate not going to eat chocolate. And then I see chocolate in the house and I really start, you know, I want to eat it, want to eat it. And I say, no, no, I'm not going to eat it. But then finally I give in and I eat it. I find myself eating chocolate. Can't control myself. I broke down and ate the chocolate. So I couldn't control myself. I gave in to the pressure, gave in to the temptation. That's another kind of break it down. Interesting one. If you ever watch the show Friends, you'll know this one, common one with a uh, famous one with Ross and Rachel. If you're in a relationship, and these are emotional times, right? If you're in a relationship, obviously. It's not easy to break up. So maybe the couple's fighting, they're arguing, they calm down, they say, you know what? I'm not sure that we want to break up and start dating other people, but maybe we shouldn't you know, that, that just sounds like too much to really commit to right now. So let's just go on a break. And it, it's just a subtle difference. It's a small difference. And what it means really is basically 
you kind of broke up, but maybe you're going to get back together. Even though real breaking up, you know, you can always get back together if you want. But if you say, okay, we're on a break, it just means you're separated and you're thinking about your relationship, basically. So you can date other people, but you're, you know, most people are obviously going to be jealous about it. And that's what it means. So you're kind of temporarily, for a short time, you broke up. Um, you know, so broke, as I said, is the past tense of break. But if I just say I'm broke, okay, if I say oh, I'm broke, what does that mean? I don't have any money. That's what broke means. Oh, uh, don't ask him for any money. He's guy's broke. He hasn't had a job in a long time. He's got no money at all. He's broke. And it doesn't mean you have no money in your pocket. It means you got no money in your pocket, you got no money in the bank, you have no money anywhere. You just don't have any money. You, don't, you can't even sell stuff to get money. You have no way of getting money. You're broke. And of course, you know, if you have like only $10, you can still say you're broke. Just you have very, very, very little money that, you know, it's so bad that you can just say you're broke. It's like almost like a person going bankrupt. You just have to get nothing. Uh, last one, kind of interesting, you know, it's a sad one, but interesting. A broken home. So it's not the house that you're living in is broken. Doesn't even make sense, really. Um, if somebody comes from a broken home, what does that mean? It means something like it wasn't a perfect family situation. Maybe their dad cheated on the mom and left the mom. Um, Maybe the mom cheated on the dad, left the dad. Parents are fighting, arguing, doesn't work out. So the kid was raised with a single parent. Now that's not always a terrible thing. A lot of people grow up well from that. But that's called a broken home. When the family splits up and you come in that way, that's a broken home. Uh, abusive relationship from the parents, they get divorced. Kid grows up single parent. They came from a broken home. So you could say it's amazing that that guy became, you know, a professor or a doctor or a president. He came from a broken home. So it's kind of like saying he overcame the odds. He did well despite the early not-so-great conditions. So there's a lot of ways to use break and broke.